Good morning. Welcome to the Friday, September 3rd, Bulls and Bears Morning Podcast. Well, starting off things this morning, uh, equities are pretty well unchanged. Uh, unemployment did drop from 5.4 to 5.2. Um, the crude oil market right now was up a little bit here ago, but now has dropped down to 10, down 10, down 20 cents here. So not much happening in as far as the, uh, the macro side of things here this morning. Turning to the grains, uh, right now you've got uh, on the close here, uh, mid-session, you've got uh, corn down two and three quarters at 522 three quarters. We've got November beans up seven and three quarters at 1291. December wheat is uh, up four and a half at 721 and a half. Kind of the news today was pretty scarce, but uh, overnight deliveries were zero for corn and soybeans. We did have 100 Chicago wheat delivered, uh, no KC and one read delivered in Minneapolis. The uh, most of uh, the trade is kind of probably be on a long extended we weekend here. This uh, and I would say after the close, uh, it'll be pretty scarce to find somebody. Uh, with uh, the Labor Day holiday, uh, trade will start back up Monday night at seven o'clock. Uh, we do have the WASDE report next Friday. Kind of the big question on that is obviously acreage. The USDA coming out yesterday saying that they will have a resurvey for the uh, September acreage. This is kind of uncommon. Uh, typically what happens is we, we, we have an acreage change on the October report, and that is where uh, basically the FSA data from you know, farmer reporting and then the RMA uh, reporting from crop insurance, whether it be failed acreage or, or prevent plant, uh, that's where that acreage number will come together to join with the NAS data and give us a better, uh, better, just a better uh, acreage number in October. But to have this happen in September, uh, like I said, is, is unusual. Uh, you have part of the trade saying that uh, you know USDA in the last acreage report understated by a million to a million and a half acres of uh, corn. Uh, on the other hand, you've got uh, part of the trade saying, look, we, you know, we. Started chopping silage really early because of the drought in the northwest, and, and harvested acreage could potentially drop 400 to 500,000 because of uh, because of silage. So, I mean, that's kind of what uh, we're facing here—a little bit of uncertainty. Uh, you've got uh, corn lower here. We did have uh, one private analyst uh, out last night. Uh, they took their uh, corn bushel per acre to 177.25 versus the USDA at 174.6. They also took their uh, bean yield to 50.8 versus the USDA at 50. Uh, we're probably seeing some strength here in the beans this morning. Um, a group out of Brazil saying that there probably will be some delays in planting uh, down there because of dryness. Uh, we had heard that there was enough moisture uh, down there, so it's going to be interesting to see there. The uh, uh, T-Storm says that uh, Argentina – Rains look really good. Rains here in the U.S. Uh, this weekend and then turn off drier. For the most part, I, I don't think we're going to help uh, corn very much at this point, but we will help the soybeans. Next Tuesday, we will get another uh, crop conditions report. Uh, look for it to be, probably be close to unchanged, around 60% good to excellent on the corn. Uh, I would look for uh, beans to probably be up 1% to 2% just with all the rains we're getting. Um, and we were at 56% this week. Uh, would look for some improvement in the uh, the beans, but uh, there is some bean harvest. I think it's some, you know, obviously some early numbers planted, uh, but that's pretty scarce. I would say the, the bulk of bean harvest won't be for another two, three weeks. Corn harvest, uh, you know, was getting ramped up pretty good with the, uh, the inverse that we had. Uh, from old crop to new crop, but that inverse has, has really uh, suffered here. Take St. Louis, for example, and uh, we're off a $1.27 uh, flat price here uh, basically in a, in a week. Uh, so that's that's kind of taken the incentive out of the for the producer to, to kind of go get after this, uh, this corn market. And with the logistics problems that we're having at the Gulf, that has kind of backed uh, back grains up as well. And the market's doing what it should. You, you've got spreads uh, widening out. You've got basis kind of collapsing, and the market saying, don't send any more grain to the river. Uh, now, having said that, the northwest basis continues to be very firm. You know, you've got some spots in the uh, Dakotas where there, uh, we still see some triple-digit basis numbers over. Uh, that, that's twofold. Uh, obviously, you've got the drought there, uh, but you've also got a drought in Canada. We continue to see uh, trains trading into Canada out of the United States, and we look for more of that to happen with the uh, the issues that they're having up there. 
With logistics also, uh, you've got uh, uh, problems with rail uh, in the west. The B and the UP right now are running water trains to, to fight fires in California, and that's disrupting service out there. So, uh, And then the Coast Guard says they need another four days to, uh, to assess the, uh, the channel to make sure it's safe to, uh, to run vessels and barges through there. Uh, you've got a, somewhere between 100 to 200 barges you know, uh, missing, basically uh, either sunk or, or runaway barges. So uh, it's going to still take some time to get things cleaned up. There is one terminal down there that has electricity, uh, has the ability to load, but but uh, you know that vessel can't move until things have been cleared up. Other than that, that's about it. I uh, hope everyone enjoys their uh, long extended weekend.